Hello, this is Gerd Leonhardt, Futurist and CEO of the Futures Agency. We're having a conversation today about the digital transformation, the digital economy of banking and financial services. With me are Simon Torrance and Rowe Talwa, both from London. And we're going to jump in and, and ask a key question. In my view, the discussion about how banks are going to go digital or not has been raging for a long time. And a lot of banks have said, you know, it's too difficult what we do and it won't happen. But it's, it feels like it's happening now. It feels like money is going digital, Bitcoin is everywhere, even though nobody's really using it. But is it actually real? I mean, are the banks and financial services being transformed digitally? I think what's happening now is for a long time, you know, people heard the mantra that we need banking, not banks. And the bank said, well, it's too complicated to go digital in the way you're saying. And now what's happening is they're being bypassed. We've now got a whole bunch of platforms, crowdfunding platforms, crowd financing platforms, where every single aspect of financial services from debt financing to mortgage financing to uh, raising equity can now be done with one of these platforms. And we have lots of distrust, right? I yeah. mean, the, the trust crisis is humongous in banking, right? And these players are bypassing the old players who we don't trust and they're demonstrating they can do it. And they're doing it in a way that benefits both sides of the party, the transaction more. They're eliminating the profits of the banks. You are going to start to see this erode and you're going to start to see the banks adapt to this. Some will disappear, some will merge, some will embrace But is it, it just the low-hanging fruits that are going to go away? Like the low-hanging yeah. fruits being the transfer fees to my son in America. Mm -hmm. You know, those are low-hanging fruits yeah, yeah. or everything. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. Well, you made exactly the right point. There's, there's, there's banking or, uh, and financial services and then the banks themselves. Mm -hmm. So if I do, I'll just stick on the banks for a moment here on this. But I think they, although they have been, obviously their reputation has been damaged uh, over the last, you know, some time ago, um, they, they've got an interesting transformation to make in terms of what, how to deepen their relationship with their customers. And they are, relative to other sectors, actually quite well trusted. You know, you put your money in a bank, that's quite a, quite a trusted thing. And they have a lot of information about you. So I think a lot of, uh, many banks are now starting to think, well, what else could we sell our customers? We tend to sell a little bit of extra things on the side, maybe a bit of, sort of obviously, banking services, a bit of insurance. But could we not sell telecom services, for example? Could we not sell entertainment services? Could we not sell healthcare services? And that would be in the past, you know, very, you know, they'd never think about that. But with new digital technologies enabling very rapidly to integrate partners that the company, the organizations like banks can make available to their customers, I think that's a possibility. I think the other, thing, the other thing you're seeing is uh, the, the people who paid the bill are starting to challenge it now. So in the past, I raised a billion dollars through a bank. I paid somewhere between 50 million and 80 million dollars in fees. And look at what the bank did. And basically, they went around to all the same people said, would you buy this, equ this equity or take this debt? I've now got platforms that will enable me to do that. And I've invested in those platforms. So why wouldn't I use them to do my own debt and equity raising? Uh, and then suddenly, I'm cutting my transaction fees from 50 to $80 million to a few hundred thousand dollars. It, it makes no sense for me to use these other guys because they're adding no value. Yeah, I, mean, I think we have to distinguish between the consumer facing part and the low hanging fruit for other disruptions to come in and of course the mortgages and the large loans and the financial system but underlying all of that is in my view is the shift to digital currency uh, so that comes on top of the stuff I mean I use TransferWise to send money to to uh, to all over the place and Africans use M-Pesa and stuff and that is already going away and lots of people have said that will take away 45 50 percent of US banks uh, uh, from from all that stuff that people use to pay for uh, but you know what about digital money I mean is it real or is it a pipe dream you know unencumbered encrypted peer-to-peer -peer? I think there's two things going on there one is the digital currency itself just starts to give you a universal currency to do these local transactions so most people don't even realize now that a lot of the international money payments they're doing are being executed with Bitcoin because the bank is doing it in dollars to euros at the other end but underneath it's all being done in Bitcoin. What, what, all or a lot or tiny? Some, or? A, a more and more of it. Okay. More and more places are doing it. The second thing that's going on is that uh, people are beginning to understand blockchain technology. The, the secure communications technology that sits underneath these transactions is something that could be used across every industry for communicating financial data, health data, a secure data of any kind. That in itself is going to be quite transformational. And then you're starting to see the new players like Bank to the Future coming up who are saying, 
we can build a whole ecosystem that completely bypasses the banks from everything from consumer finance right the way through to large scale corporate debt and equity raising. We don't need the banks anymore to do any of this stuff. We've got super secure, highly efficient platforms where we're taking a tiny fraction of the payment that was being taken in the past and you, the consumer, and you, the investor, have far more control. That reminds me of the sort of, uh, Simon, are they the next record labels, really? Because it remind, really reminds me of the music business, mm -hmm. to where you couldn't do anything without banks until, you know, just recently, and, and now you can? Is that the future? Yeah, well, I guess like any industry, all industries are being disrupted, and those that will be successful are the ones who grab hold of the, of the, uh, of, of the new technologies and, and work out how to almost disrupt themselves. So the, the, the clever banks will be the ones that can adapt. Like, you know, it's the old Dar Darwinism, Darwinism again. So who knows? Well, I, I, see, a, I see a real rift there because now governments are also saying, okay, if we get this digital currency thing that becomes encrypted without su uh, government supervision, for mm -hmm. example, which is peer-to-peer, -peer, essentially decentralized, that opens up a whole bunch of things that are quite at the core of, of a capitalist economy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, outside of a central bank, mm -hmm. and, I mean, is that real? Or? Well, the Bank of England has already started to explore how you incorporate those kind of transactions into the measure of the economy. We're, we're going to see this more and more as countries begin to understand that what the visible economy is only a fraction of the real economy. Uh, in some countries, up to 90% of all the activity goes on in the informal economy. It's a distant cousin of the tax system. Right, right. You know, as this all moves to a transactional, a, a electronic transactional system, whether it's Bitcoin or some other one, it gives you the potential to at least know what's going on. Even if you can't take tax from it, you can measure and monitor. Uh, so some countries are actually saying, we'll encourage this because it, it starts to regularize the way money flows around the economy. I think that raises a good point about the regulation as well, because you have you have banking regulators and you have telecoms regulators and you have other regulators and in fact this stuff is sort of merging together but the regulations are often created in, in very isolated silos. Well let's wrap this up the session uh, let's say if you were a big bank today international bank or, or a big national bank let's give two pieces of advice each to how you're going to transform the ba that bank into the digital age. Mm -hmm. One understand the new players that are coming into your market and what's coming over the horizon in terms of people coming up with new and disruptive ideas. Secondly, more than ever, you have to get inside the head of your customer. And you know whether it's the people making investments or the people borrowing money from you, and understand the sheer range of options now being presented to them for how they can complete those transactions. Get your head into the space of recognizing that you no longer have a monopoly, you no longer have a dominance over the space, and the more the world becomes digital, the easier it will be for people to erode that which we, you thought was your unique domain. Yeah, right. Well, I would echo that. I think the, the key thing in all of these digital transformation discussions is that uh, most, most customers tend to be um, uh, quite lazy. They want an easy life and convenience. And they're used to working with, I, I've been with my bank for 30 years now. Um, as long as they can, they, the bank can understand my needs and serve me in a way that is reasonable price, I'll stick with them. So I think your point is exactly right there. Understand the customers and get, get into their head and be more proactive in working out the problems that you can solve for them while also understanding the disruptive technology that's coming over the hill mm -hmm. and try and grab hold of that and adopt it in how you serve your customers. Yeah, I think you know, from my point of view, the, the most important part is uh, that all these, you know, if you're looking around, there is in, in financial technology, fintech, as they call it in Switzerland, you know, they, there's tens of thousands of startups mm. and innovators. Mm. If I was a bank, I would say, hey, let me put money into those people that mm. want to kill me. Mm. Uh, like, you know, the record labels with Napster, right? Yeah. Uh, but to its conclusion, mm. that would be a logical step saying, maybe I can bring those people in to help me be part of that new future. Right? Well, it's interesting. Uh, most, uh, many banks have now set up offices in Silicon Valley. You know, there's a big ecosystem mm. there because that's where you get all the... Yeah, that was my second point is, I think banking in the future is a giant ecosystem mm. right, of different layers interconnecting mm. rather than giant banks. Yeah. Right? And yeah, to yeah. become part of that, to become indispensable in the ecosystem, yeah. that would be my advice, my second piece. Well, just one thing we haven't touched on there is that who is tomorrow's consumer going to trust? Are they going to place their trust in banks who they've had almost no contact with or the likes of Apple, Google, Facebook with whom they have a daily relationship? You know, that what the banks don't quite get yet is that those who own the consumer high ground, those who own the most intimate relationship, 
are probably going to be the ones who end up being trusted to manage people's finances. Well, it's, and this is a lot like a newspaper. You know, they can't imagine a world without them because they're, they're living inside of their own head going towards the consumer. And the consumer has, already, I mean, digital natives have already doing just fine in the world without a printed paper, right? So, same exercise. Anyway, we're wrapping it up on this session on the digital transformation of the banking and financial business. Uh, Simon Torrance, Robert Talba, Gerard Leonard. There's more information at thefuturesagency.com. Thanks for tuning in. Thank <music> you.